Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be returning to the Zig Code side of things. Uh, still talking about memory alignment, but this time we're going to see how that works in our Zig Code. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be printing out the natural alignment of these types that we have here U8, U16, U32, U64. I'm basically using what's known as an inline 4. And this is part of the compile time features of Zig, the comp time as it's known in Zig. Uh, a normal 4 is going to be evaluated at runtime, but if you're going to be dealing with types directly as values, like we're doing here, we're going to be iterating over these types, then you have to do this in a compile time context. And that's what inline 4 will do for you. It will let you um, evaluate a for loop at compile time. So what we're going to be doing for each one of those types is we're going to be using the align of built-in, as, as we see here. Align of takes a type. That's what we do here with each of the types while we are iterating in this loop. And we will see that natural alignment. We will be printing um, those out. So let's build and run this. And as you can see, as expected, we have that the alignment for U8 is 1. Uh, U16 2, U32 4, and U64 8. So the natural alignments are as expected. Um, they will always be powers of 2. And in most architectures uh, these days, these are basically the natural alignments that you're going to be seeing. Um, there, there could be cases where uh, a special case architecture has a different value for, the, for, an, uh, for a natural alignment. But uh, this, these are the most common, okay? Now let's take a look at these examples here. These are basically like we saw in our previous video, we're defining X, Y, and Z. Um, X and Z are U8s and Y is a U32. And we're gonna be taking a look at their location in memory by creating pointers uh, to them, like we do here with the uh, address of operator. So let's build and run this. And as you can see, we have here that the address for our U8 is ending in uh, 9D. The U32 is ending in uh, A0. And our next U8 is ending in A4. Okay. So basically, this U8 is coming uh, right after this U32. And as we said, uh, U32 will have an alignment of 4, and in hexadecimal, those addresses will always be ending in 0, 4, 8, or C. Okay? As with many other areas um, of memory management in Zig, you can explicitly control uh, the alignment for a type. So if we want this byte to have, we can say here, align to. Let's save this and run it. And now, as you can see, we have um, that uh, that U8, uh, the address is ending in C. When the alignment is 2, uh, the address in hexadecimal can end in 0, 2, 4, 8, um, A, uh, and C. And then we go back to 0. So that's working as expected. Okay. Let's say that we want this alignment to be 8. And now the address ends in 0, which, which matches up. Uh, when we, the alignment is 8. Uh, the address can only end uh, in 0 or 8 in hexadecimal. Okay, So that's one thing that you can control when working with types in Zig. Let's see here. In the case of an array, we're defining here an array of bytes, uh, uh, sorry, uh, an array of U16s, three elements, and we're going to be, once again, printing out. Um, here in, in the for loop, we're using this asterisk in, in this cap to capture for each item, which will give us a pointer to each one of the items. And that's why we have to use the ampersand here on the array, because we need a pointer to the array to be able to get a pointer to the items. Um, so let's take a look at this output. And here we can see that we have <clears throat> our first element. Uh, the address ends in F2. 
the next one f4 the next one f6 which is right in line with how uh, u16's natural alignment of two would behave if we change this to u32 save it let's run this again now we see that the addresses are in right in line with an alignment a natural alignment of four this one ends in four the next one ends in eight the next one ends in c so as expected the array which will be a contiguous area of memory all of these items are in a sequence contiguous in memory so the addresses will be one after the other um, next up we're going to be starting to talk about um, the concept of uh, pointer alignment okay this is uh, really important we're defining here uh, this constant n of type u32 um, and then we are going to define this pointer here um, let's uh, comment this out for now let's concentrate on this part we are uh, making a normal pointer here, defining here that's a pointer to a const u32, and we're printing out the type of that. Let's run this. As you can see, we have the, the, the type of uh, taking a normal pointer is going to be a pointer to const u32, and uh, in our explicit pointer that we define, uh, the type is pointer to const u32. There's no problem with that, no surprises there, but we can also control the alignment when we are defining a pointer. So we can say here, align, uh, we're dealing here with a U32. So we're saying here, instead of the natural alignment of four, we want this pointer to align, uh, have an alignment of two. So let's run this. And as you can see now, our type for that pointer is a pointer with an alignment of two, the const U32. Okay, and um, an important detail here is, let's say that we want this alignment to be eight. And let's try to build and run it. And as you can see, we can't, and the compiler is gonna tell us, we are expecting the type uh, pointer align const u32, which is what we said explicitly, but we're getting a pointer to const u32 and then it says that the pointer alignment 4 cannot cast into pointer alignment 8. Okay? And what does that mean? It means that when, when we are dealing with the uh, alignment uh, in terms of pointer alignment, when we're going uh, from a larger value to a smaller value, as, as is the case when we went from 4, which is the natural alignment for U32, to two, well, that is allowed, and it uh, this pointer here, which will uh, initially be with an alignment of four, it will be coerced to have an alignment of two. That's no problem with that. But if we're moving up for, uh, an alignment value of four to an alignment value of eight, then you would need what's known as an align cast. Okay. Um, so let's add this align cast. We're basically casting the alignment of this pointer to the desired alignment that we are specifying over here. So now we can indeed compile and run. And as you can see, our type has a, uh, it's a pointer with an alignment of eight to a const u32. Um, there is, uh, in Zig, when we talk about interfaces later on, you're going to see that there's a special type in Zig, uh, which basically it's similar to the concept of a void pointer in C, which allows you to have a pointer to, to basically any type. And that type in Zig is called any opaque. Here we're saying that we want to define a pointer to a const any opaque. Um, and we're taking the address of N. Okay, and then we will print out uh, the type of that pointer. Let's comment out this, these two lines. Let's run this. And there you go. We have no problem in assigning the pointer to N, which is a pointer to a const U32. Uh, it can be uh, coerced to a pointer to a const any opaque without any problems. Okay, but here, in these lines, we want to go back 
to the actual concrete type of uh, const32. We want this pointer PC to be a pointer to const32. So we are assigning it PB, which is a pointer to a const any opaque. And if we try to build and run this, we're going to see that we get an error from the compiler. It's telling us we're expecting a pointer to a const32, but we are getting a pointer to a const any opaque. Okay. It's actually telling us that the pointer type child any opaque cannot uh, cast into the pointer type child u32. Okay. So uh, there exists in Zig. Uh, a built-in that's called pointer cast so we can um, use pointer cast when we are trying to cast one from one pointer type to another so let's try to build this and now the compiler will tell us that we can't do that now it's telling us that the pointer cast increases pointer alignment okay um, it's telling us here that uh, pointer to, co to const any opaque has alignment 1 and the pointer to const u32 has alignment 4. Okay, and then it tells us a uh, helpful hint here use align cast okay, to assert point pointer alignment. So what do we do? We inside this call to pointer cast we insert a call to the built-in align cast okay so now let's save this let's run it and it compiles and runs and PC is now a pointer to the const u32 so um, it's important uh, you will see this um, when we're dealing with interfaces you will see examples also in, in, in the standard library code where you see this this type of syntax here we're using the built-in pointer cast and inside of that we're using an align cast and now you know what's going on um, the pointer cast is turning one type of pointer to another type of pointer and the align cast is handling the difference in alignment okay when you're moving from a smaller alignment value to a larger alignment value okay and a final um, example I want to cover here is uh, here we have uh, we're saying that that let's rename this to PD okay and uh, PD is going to be a pointer to a const u16 but here we're using a little uh, basically it's like a trick here we want to find uh, explicitly the address ourselves so uh, since a pointer is indeed an address we can assign an address to it um, and what we're doing here is using the built-in pointer from int, which will let us allow, uh, 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 basically decide the address by specifying an integer. And here we're specifying this made up address here. Let's uh, change this to two. Sig build run. And there you go. We have no problem. But if we set that back to three and we try to build and run it, we get an error here, and it's telling us that the pointer type pointer to a const u6, uh, u16 requires an aligned address, okay? And it's pointing precisely to this address that we specified here. Um, and it's not aligned because as we, as we said, the natural alignment for u16 is two, so the addresses in hexadecimal are always going to be in that pattern of zero or ending in zero, two, four, six, eight, A, uh, C, E. Okay. Um, the same thing would happen. Let's change this to U32. If this ends in a four, then it compiles without any error. But if it ends, let's say in a seven, and we try to build it's going to give us once again that error that we're uh, using and, uh, and requires an aligned address okay so here we can see uh, that evidence of what I told you that uh, in zig it will not allow uh, a pointer 
to have uh, an unaligned address. It will uh, require that the address match up with the alignment that, that the pointer has, okay? So that's basically what I wanted to cover in terms of memory alignment in uh, zig code. I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.